Hi there, let's do another uh, example where we're, we've got a trig value for an angle and we're trying to figure out the angle itself. So the one we just did was a sine one. So let's do a cos one this time. And let's say that we know that cosine of our angle is, and let's be different. Um, let's go negative 0.3457. As soon as you see that, the next thing you need, otherwise, let, let's pretend that this is all that's included in the question. And you see that and you think, oh, hey, we learned about the cast rule. I know where things are positive. Now, obviously, if I know where things are positive, I also know where they're negative. So if I know I have a negative cos um, angle, or if I know cos of the angle is negative, that's going to happen here and here. Now, the catch is, remember, we're talking about rotation angles. We're talking about angles in standard position that start here and rotate around and around and around and around and around. And why does that matter? Because right now, if I asked you to solve this, and we can do that, let's just do it. Grab the calculator, go undo cosine of negative 0.3457 equals. And it tells me 122 degree or 0.5 degrees. There's an answer. Now, if you think about that angle, that rotation angle lands in this quadrant, which is great, right? Because um, that's where we know cosine is going to be negative. Can we figure out this one as well? Yes, in a second, I'll show you how to do that. The catch is, let's think about this. What if this angle rotated like that? What if this angle was 482.5 degrees? If you find cos of 482.5, you get the same negative 0.3457. And what if it rotated one twice before it got to there? There are an infinite number of right answers to this question as it's written. That's a problem. So let me clean this up for a second and let's talk about what else is needed if we're going to do this question. And if I ever give you this question and don't give you the next part, you need to say, hey, I'm going to be here forever because there's infinite answers. If I ask you to solve for, for theta, if cos of theta is negative 0.3457, I also need to tell you some boundaries on theta. So let's say for this instance, um, theta is going to be between 0 and 270 degrees. Now, what does that mean? Quadrants 1, 2, or 3. So if there were an answer in quadrant 4, we'd throw it out and disregard it because this is where we're tied to to try and find our answer. So we punch it into our calculator, and we know theta is 122.5 degrees. That covers off quadrant 2. Is there an answer for this in quadrant 1? No, there isn't, because cosine is not negative in quadrant 1. So I know there's no answer there. I've got my quadrant 2. How do I find my quadrant 3? We know this part. We know cosine is negative down here, so we know there should be an answer. We know that the angle is going to rotate like this. The catch is, normally we're using the first answer we get as our reference angle. 122.5 isn't a reference angle. It's this whole rotate quadrant too. The reference angle is this piece. How do we find this? Well, we know this is 180 degrees. We know this part is 122.5. So we just subtract 180, 22.5, and I find out that this is 57.5. I know this is also 57.5. So to solve this cosine, I know I have 122.5, covers my, my quadrant two. To get quadrant three, I need to go 180 and 57.5 or 237.5 degrees. And your answer would be far neater than this because I doodled all over it. Your answers are 122.5 degrees or 237.5 degrees. Don't list 57.5.
If you punch in cos of 57.5, you don't get negative. You get positive 0.3457. We know because of the cast rule, we're only looking for quadrants two and three.